Hi everyone, greetings from uh, Tunisia. It's my pleasure today uh, to participate to the first uh, Quantum African Summit organized by One uh, Quantum uh, Africa. Uh, it, uh, what I'm going to speak about is uh, specifically uh, quantum sensing and the quantum metrology uh, with a focus on uh, uh, opportunities and challenges in uh, Africa or for Africa. But before that, let me just emphasize that uh, this year, 2021, is a very good year to speak about uh, quantum. So as you can see, this very unique and special uh, configuration of the digits of this year uh, is uh, all uh, you need uh, to uh, to make the Hadamar uh, plus state. This is really amazing. Um, at the same time, more and more serious uh, stuff is happening. For instance, this important initiative uh, by more than 60 uh, quantum physicists uh, belonging to, to uh, different countries to launch the uh, World Quantum Day uh, every uh, April 14th, uh, uh, starting from next year, uh, year 2022. But already uh, this year, many uh, um, events have been organized and, and part of them, uh, Africa was uh, involved. So to go back to the topic of today uh, about uh, quantum technologies uh, already defined by previous speakers. <clears throat> so as you have certainly understood, it is about all the tools and uh, devices based on the uh, um, uh, quantum properties of the matter uh, at microscopic scale, uh, mainly the quantum superposition of states or the quantum uh, entanglement. The quantum technology may be divided into, uh, say, four uh, uh, subdomains, quantum sensing and metrology, uh, but also simulation, quantum communication, including a quantum key distribution, and of course, uh, uh, quantum computing and quantum algorithms. So today, the focus will be on, on the first uh, item. Uh, quantum sensing and quantum metrology are, of course, related because quantum metrology is about uh, very precise measurements. And uh, to reach this goal, you need to develop uh, very precise sensors. Uh, those sensors are used in metrology and uh, uh, likewise, uh, uh, so that both are uh, uh, tightly linked. Um, uh, on the other hand, the quantum metrology is part of the metrology, and metrology is a quite old uh, field. So let me just uh, remind, uh, mainly for the uh, youngest fellows here, uh, what uh, is uh, metrology about. So it is um, uh, the science of measurement, and for that you need the units, and uh, uh, everyone knows the seven uh, 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 units of the international system, the, the Kelvin, the meter, the ampere, the second, the mole, the kilogram, and the candela. The seven uh, units form the SI, the French ac acronym for uh, international uh, system. Among these units, uh, 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 like the second, for instance, or the ampere, the, the definition is or was already linked to, to quantum phenomena for a long time uh, through uh, the atomic clocks in the case of second and also through the quantum Hall effect for, for the ampere. Uh, for the meter also, it is indirectly linked through the definition of the second, uh, but it was not the case, for instance, for the kilogram. So we will see uh, how uh, uh, nowadays, and this is very recent actually, uh, almost all the the, um, the units are linked to quantum physics. And uh, what is for sure is that all of them are now linked to uh, uh, constants that are the fundamental uh, uh, physics or physical uh, constants. Um, a big event happened a couple of years ago. Uh, it was called the quantum revolution in metrology. Uh, since uh, all the definitions of the, or at least four of four of the defi all definitions of uh, 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 units were uh, amended, so that now, as I said, all the units, all the seven units, are linked each one at least to one major uh, physical constant. 
a striking point, for instance, is that the kilogram, which is a microscopic uh, uh, qu a quantity uh, at the human scale, is uh, is now linked to the uh, Planck uh, uh, constant, which is the, the fundamental constant in quantum physics. So let me briefly review uh, what is going on for the second, uh, and then the kilogram to see uh, the, the, the impact of quantum on on metrology. So for the second, the definition uh, uh, which entered into force more than 50 years ago is based on a specific transition between uh, a couple of atomic states of a specific atom, which is the cesium. And the second is exactly this number of periods of the uh, that transition. The physical implementation of the, the second, so the standard for time or frequency, is what is called the atomic clock. And in its first uh, microwave version in the 50s, it is based on a beam of atoms that crosses two interaction zones with microwave field for the preparation of the state and then the measurement uh, so that the uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the definition of the second can be defined with a very good uh, uh, accuracy and very low uncertainty. So as you see here, uh, the quantum physics is already there. So this is obviously a quantum effect. But what, when speaking about quantum metrology, uh, we are not speaking about uh, uh, this generation of uh, 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 standards or devices based on what is called the first uh, quantum uh, revolution. We are more speaking about what is happening uh, today, as you will see. So in the meantime, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, more sophisticated the devices or atomic locks were uh, constructed, starting from the cesium beam a clock, then to the fountain clock based on uh, laser cooling and launching in the, in the field of gravity, which improves the uncertainty by uh, two uh, orders of magnitude. And then, very recently, the new generation of atomic clocks, uh, which relies completely on the, the quantum physics uh, for individual uh, atoms or ions here, uh, 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 cooled or trapped, uh, so that uh, incredible levels of uncertainty can be um, achieved, like 10 to the minus 18 for neutral uh, atoms in uh, optical lattices, or even 10 to the minus 19 in the case of aluminium single ion quantum logical clocks. So these numbers means, for instance, uh, like we expect a drift uh, of one second over periods uh, like the age of universe, 10 or even 20 billions uh, of years. So the technology now is uh, um, uh, mature enough so that uh, probably a new definition of the second or likely a new uh, definition of the second will enter into force within the, the next years. And this is one of the domains of research and development in quantum meteorology and the quantum uh, sensitivity. The applications, of course, uh, are many, uh, besides the fundamental physics. The most famous one is the GPS. And for a large country like Africa, we definitely uh, need uh, uh, good uh, positioning. Now we are relying on uh, a system developed by uh, other uh, uh, developed countries, like uh, the US GPS, the European Galileo, uh, GLONASS from Russia or more recently Beidou Compass from China, but at some point we have to consider our uh, our own uh, development. Now uh, for the kilogram, the, the story is, is different, but <clears throat> very interesting as well. So for more than one century, the definition of the kilogram was based on a physical artifact uh, stored uh, uh, somewhere in, 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 in Paris and managed by the Bureau International de Poids et Mesures. So when, you, when uh, one country needs uh, its own standard, uh, copies are made uh, and disseminated. The problem is that over the, the century, as you can see here in, the, in this scale, a quite important and significant uh, drift has been recorded for the uh, original 
uh, uh, prototype, but also for the copies. And these drifts can be as high as 50 micrograms or even more. So this was one of the reasons be behind uh, the, the, the procedure that led to uh, the new definitions uh, of the units so that they do not rely anymore on a specific artifact, but on more reliable uh, uh, laws of nature and uh, physics at the micro microscopic scale, including uh, quantum. As a consequence, the kilogram, uh, as for 2019, is uh, defined so that the uh, Planck constant has an exact value as specified here. So the question is, what is the link between a macroscopic kilogram and H? So actually, the link is through the uh, physical implementation of the uh, kilogram standard, uh, known as the uh, watt balance, or the cable uh, balance, in which electric power is, is used to uh, balance the, the weight. Uh, so as electric uh, 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 quantities are already very well known in uh, metrology and their measurement is based on the quantum hole effect. And in the quantum hole effect, you have already the, the electric charge E and also the uh, Planck constant. So you can uh, uh, make a link between the kilogram and H. Now, uh, the questions we have to address are about opportunities and challenges in Africa for metrology, but in general for science uh, and technology, including quantum. Well, the opportunities are many. I'm just uh, here. Uh, uh, um, uh, picking a few of them the first one is that for the for the for the needs of economic uh, growth and development for international trade and for export uh, uh, and accreditation we need to develop our own national meteorology institutes and if they already exist we need to improve their capabilities so there is a kind of uh, positive pressure from the developed countries on, on us to, to push us to, uh, uh, to, to improve metrology in general, and at some point we reach quantum metrology. Also, there is a, a need for questions of sovereignty and uh, technology transfer for the implementation of our own um, standards. I was speaking about atomic locks, but this applies uh, for uh, other quantities as well. Uh, another good opportunity is the, the existing uh, quite good fabric of universities and research centers through Africa, in which uh, we have uh, an, an excellent reservoir of very good students and, and young people, and we can rely on them uh, to develop uh, 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 metrology, quantum, and uh, uh, science in general. The challenges are also uh, 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 many. One of the prerequisites is the legal from, from work, and from my experience, I, I have to notice that uh, this legal framework is in general lacking or not up to date in most of the African uh, countries, unfortunately. So this has uh, changed. Uh, also, the problem is about the economic and social priorities uh, governments are facing with basic problems. Uh, so, is it really a priority for a uh, given country to, to put money on, uh, on the development of uh, metrology and sensing? And even when the decision is taken, there is always this choice to make between local development of technology and the, the development of devices or the turnkey uh, solutions, uh, uh, which are always uh, available and presented by uh, big companies and developed uh, countries. So let's have a look, for instance, on the, on the legal um, side about the international uh, agreements about metrology. The most important is the METER Convention initiated a long time ago. You can see on this map in red the member states of the convention as for 2018. And you can see in the case of Africa that only four states are or were at that time uh, member states and seven other countries, mainly in South region, as associate uh, uh, states. 
you have seen a lot of uh, maps with uh, Africa lacking for something, and uh, this this one is not different. Well, but the situation the situation is slightly improving, and as you can see, for as for today, uh, Morocco joined the member states together with Tunisia now, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa, and a couple of other uh, uh, states in uh, East Africa are becoming uh, associated. And we absolutely need to, to do more. This is about political decision. Uh, there is not really a lot of money to put in uh, to be just uh, uh, aware about the importance of, uh, of this kind of international agreements. Well, so at the global scale of the, of the country, uh, we are not starting from scratch. There are already existing uh, good networks uh, doing a good job. Uh, in the case of metrology, for instance, AFRINETs and CAFMETs, CAFMET are there. And the related fields like lasers and photonics, uh, I can uh, notice the African Laser Center, the African Light Source Project, and nanophysics and related fields, Nano AFNET Network. The recent East African Institute for Fundamental Research in Rwanda is a very good initiative supported by the UN and the ICTP. Uh, uh, African Physical uh, Society Initiative is more global as well as the uh, African Strategy for Fundamental uh, and Applied Physics. At the same time, uh, as I said, we already have uh, some good universities in Africa and some of them are showing up in the uh, Shanghai ranking, as you can see in this graphic along the years from the beginning of uh, Shanghai ranking system from 2003 uh, till now, starting with four uh, universities from South Africa, we now have like 16 uh, 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 universities from, uh, of course, South Africa, but also Egypt, Tunisia, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Uganda, and probably other uh, countries are, are coming. These uh, universities are contributing to the a global uh, publication uh, volume in, in the world, as you as you can see more or less here. For for instance, for the University of Cape Town, the the the, the total of publications uh, during the seventeen years is about uh, thirty thousand, uh, which is a good a good number actually. Uh, well, of course, at some point you have to renormalize and compare it to the to the to the to the other countries. So this can be uh, displayed in this kind of of uh, maps where the surface of or the area of uh, countries are proportional to their publications, and you can see in this kind of distorted maps that are dominated by U.S. and China, and where Africa is almost uh, absent. Unfortunately, uh, in this zoom, you can easily recognize a few countries and the, situ the situation has to be improved and we are working very hard uh, all together to, to make this happen. To be specific to uh, quantum in Africa, many initiatives for high level postgraduate master degrees in, in quantum are already there in, in South Africa. Of course, we heard about KwaZulu-Natal and also about WITS and the agreement with, uh, with IBM for Africa. Other uh, universities are developing also programs. This is the case of University of Alexandria in Egypt, uh, University of Mo Mohammed Al Khamis at, uh, in Rabat, Morocco, and also my own university, uh, Tunis El in Tunisia. So, just to give you an idea about what is going on in, in my own university, we, for instance, we launched a, few, a couple of years ago uh, a new master degree in nanophysics and nanotechnology in which the, the curriculum includes over three semesters um, specific uh, courses uh, directly li linked to quantum so and to quantum, quantum metrology and the quantum sensing using cold atoms and the quantum gases but also nanomagnetism nanophotonics etc for quantum computing quantum information and quantum computing we are, we are already using the ibm Qiskit platform for uh, practicals and uh, hands-on the first cohort uh, graduated uh, last year, uh, 12 uh, very good students and uh, 15 uh, others. So some of them are, are, are already embarking in quantum research, either for quantum uh, computing or 
laser cooling and both Einstein uh, condensate physics uh, with applications in interferometry. Um, so around the university uh, and other universities in Tunisia, other groups are also working on, on quantum uh, uh, physics, so including quantum registers, uh, quantum dots and 2D materials, photonics and fibers, quantum gates and, and metrology. And <clears throat> just to give you an idea, I, I will present a little bit what is going on in, in my laboratory, El Sama, at the uh, Faculty of Science of Tunis in University of uh, Tunis El Manar. You can go to the Google Scholar uh, page of the laboratory to have more information. But just to give you a, a flavor, the, the research on uh, laser cooling is quite old uh, in our lab. Uh, so we started with atom optics uh, by uh, simulating and studying uh, a beam splitter with cold atoms and then the deflection control deflection of uh, uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, so moving to the physics of Bose-Einstein condensates in specific power law laser traps and, uh, and its uh, kinetics. So more recently, the use of Bose-Einstein condensates and moving optical lattices for uh, precision atom interferometry and the test of fundamental uh, physics, and also coherent control with ultra-short pulses uh, uh, which is directly related also to quantum control and quantum physics. So, so to support these efforts, we are also organizing uh, uh, schools and uh, conferences. Uh, to have an idea here is an example of the Spring School on Quantum Atoms and Molecules with professors coming from uh, the best universities in the world, from MIT, from, from NIST, from from Germany, uh, PTB, from uh, France, etc. And we will try to take part also to the more global uh, initiative quantum conference series like here in Stellenbosch in 2019. So in conclusion, what I want to, to, to emphasize here is that there is an urgent need for us as Africans to, to join the international effort on quantum technologies in the field of uh, uh, meteorology and sensing, but in all the other fields. We have to set up a roadmap for the quantum technologies. Uh, we can rely on the national initiatives already there, like in South Africa, for instance. For that, we need also to enhance the capacity building and to update the curricula and to introduce quantum technologies in all the universities. And uh, last but not least, let me uh, call everyone here to work together for this fascinating project for the benefit of uh, our uh, uh, our country. So with that, uh, uh, I'm done. I thank you uh, very much. Uh, and once again, greetings from uh, Tunisia. Bye-bye.